What is going on? It's Alex coming back at you with another video. And today it is going to be yet another mock draft with Trey's Day. There's going to be three rounds split up into two days, just like the NFL draft. Day one is going to be round one. Day two is going to be rounds two and three. We're going to get a seven round mock draft in here very soon. Super stoked for that. Going to have a great time. Join the community now. Hop on the hype train early. We're on the way to 10K. Let's try to make that happen by end of month. It's going to be a little bit of a tough task, but hey, why not? Why not just have the big goals? Let's have a good time here. Let's get right into this. Below my face is my board. Below that are all the great ways to get involved with the community, as well as take advantage of our two sponsors of the show for today's video, Only Pop as well as Underdog Fantasy. So use those codes, help your boy out, and help yourself out by getting addicted to gambling. Let's go. Starting off with the first overall pick, we got the Chicago Bears. And, you know, there's a couple of options that we can decide to go here. With the return of Eberflus, you could certainly bring up the idea that Justin Fields might be the dude that they have. But, you know, I don't think that's necessarily going to be an end-all, be-all. When you could trade Justin Fields, potentially get two second-round picks. People have brought up the price as two seconds in a day three pick. I'm not there with the day three pick. I think that's a bit extreme, but I do agree with the two day two picks. And so it's going to be one second round pick from this year, one from next year. The question is from who? So, or from whom? That's technically the correct way to say it since it's an object of the preposition. Who cares? We're not here in English class. So for me with the Bears, you look and they lack that second round pick. It makes total sense. So spoiler alert, we're going Caleb Williams. That's just what it is. You get five years of a significantly cheaper contract. You get similar upside in terms of the same strength, maybe a little bit shorter, but you know, Caleb Williams was as good, if not better than Justin Fields was in college. And I love Justin. I really did love Justin. I had him above Trevor for a portion as well. So, you know, I was never a Justin hater, never really have been a Justin hater. I've always wanted him to succeed and want him to continue to succeed and the question is, where are we going to help him succeed elsewhere? Uh, the, the real answer would be the Falcons. Falcons are the easy shoe in. You get a very early second round pick. I mean, Mel Kuyper brought up the fact that it could be pick eight. Pipe down, homie. Like, that's not going to happen. But when you look at other teams that should be at least on the radar, I would not want to deal with my own division. But hell, if the Minnesota Vikings are chilling there, like they can give in a call I would also look right here with the Broncos, but they need to be moving back, not moving up. And I mean, some people have said they're going to get aggressive. That's really ballsy for a team without a second round pick. I do not like that strategy at all. Uh, another team that I could see him going to would be the Saints. They need pretty much tackle and quarterback primarily. And then you could see even teams like the Seahawks and the Steelers. But I mean, you could also talk about the Raiders. Forgot to talk about them as well, since that was exactly where I went last week with Justin Fields. I think the correct move is to go after the Falcons. Until I'm proven wrong, I feel like that's just the way to go. You know, Bill Belichick, he's probably going to be the head coach of the Falcons too. So I doubt that, you know, you're really going to be looking for I that's like honestly something that could be actually a negative of this trade. Bill doesn't feel like the type of guy who would end up trading a second round pick for a quarterback, but He's used second round picks on quarterbacks before, like Jimmy G. You know, I mean, like it's a really shitty connection. But we're actually going to use that shitty connection. How about that? Bill likes sending second round picks on quarterbacks, not first, even though he ended up drafting Mac Jones. But that's beside the point. Uh, pick number 43 and then a second rounder in 2025 going for Justin Fields. Let's not make this long winded because I already did. So uh, the Bears end up trading away Justin. Caleb Williams ends up becoming a Chicago Bear. Now, the Falcons need a QB really desperately, and I just don't see it happening. I just don't see it with the with the Falcons here. Uh, at pick number two, the Commanders do need to go after a quarterback as well. You know, it's unfortunate, but new regime coming in, they just need to hit it right. They have to. They're going to get their guy. I love Sam Howell, just not the guy that they're going to be very confident in. It just feels like the second pick is going to be a QB. Now, we could end up trading back and letting Drake May be the Patriots guy because even Gerard Mayo was highlighting the fact that, you know, hey, we're going to be going after a guy at the most valuable position. Just saying that he's going to be going QB. Uh, even though I really want to go Marvin Harrison Jr., he buttered him up too, but that's going to be for the next pick. 
Uh, Washington needs to go a QB. And they could trade back and go offensive line. Honestly, I could be open to that, but someone has to trade up. And you're not going to trade with your own in-division rival here. Maybe if we ended up trading Justin somewhere else, you can talk to the Falcons about moving up for, you know, whether it's Drake May or Jaden Daniels. It would make sense for either of them. So, you know, for me, I'm going to go after the quarterback route. I'm not going to change it up. I'm getting a little gun shy here. I wanted to get a little ballsy, but we're not going to do that today. Jaden Daniels out of LSU is going to be the pick for the Washington Commanders. After hearing Mayo's speech, I unfortunately for the Patriots have to go after a quarterback. I went after Marvin Harrison Jr. yesterday, or not yesterday, but earlier this week in my two-round no-trade mock draft, and I loved it. I love the idea because it, it forces me to go elsewhere with some more teams like Arizona. Not going to happen. Not today. So I hate to say it, Drake May. I know that some people are calling him fake May. I'm not a huge guy. I'm not a huge fan of Drake May, but, you know, Gerard Mayo could have that D'Amico Ryan's effect. I love D'Amico. If you get a good OC in there, again, you have someone who is really, really talented, very smart, can definitely lead a group of men. And then if you have someone like a Bobby Slowick in the room, which you're not going to have Bobby Slowick, but an example of someone who could be very similar, then you actually could maximize Drake May's potential. We'll be going after a wide receiver or a tackle in round number two. We'll see what happens. At pick number four, I want to change things up. I want to assume that the Cardinals are not going to be uh, excited about getting Marvin Harrison Jr. because DJ Humphreys went down with a leg injury and he's pretty much done. I think he could be you know, out of there for good. So they're going to be looking at left tackle. The problem is you have Marvin Harrison Jr. on the board. Why do we, like, why not just move back with a team that wants Marvin Harrison Jr. and still get it an elite tackle? And I've heard a lot of requests from a lot of fans about getting Marvin Harrison with a particular team. That team's the Los Angeles Chargers. So we're moving down one spot. And yeah, you Cardinals fans, you're going to be like, oh, shit, you know, I really, really, really wanted Marvin Harrison Jr. But you know what? That price is really high. It is about 400 points, and this is about 400 points. So you're going to be getting an extra pick. I know the Chargers have bigger issues, but sometimes you just have to get the best return on investment. And that's not always quantity. That might just be quality. And you're going to be getting the best player in the draft. So you're going to be essentially sending Arizona a second round pick to say thank you for letting us choose our guy rather than somebody else. Debated actually doing it for New York, but AFC to NFC is much better than NFC to NFC. Uh, in my opinion, I would rather not face, I would rather be in the playoffs and have to face Marvin Harrison Jr. in the Super Bowl rather than, you know, in any of the other previous rounds. So the Chargers have moved up and select Marvin Harrison Jr. Pretty sick. Pretty sick if you ask me. I've wanted to do that for a hot second. Uh, it seems very unlikely, but, you know, the Arizona Cardinals giving up on Marvin Harrison Jr. does seem like a little bit of a kick in the balls. You do need to have you know, a little bit more than just a wide receiver. However, especially at that left tackle spot, I would have went Marvin Harrison Jr. If the Texans did not have the 27th pick. That's the unfortunate fact is that you guys got screwed by the Texans actually being talented enough to make the playoffs and make a good run. That's what sucks because otherwise you're out of range for a tackle and you need one desperately. You have Kyler who is injury prone, who is small and, you know, needs his protection. So we're going to get that protection. Uh, looking at the options available, too many teams that might be in a mood for a tackle for me to feel very comfortable. I could technically make a double move down with a team like the Falcons, but Falcons lost their second round pick. Doesn't make very much sense. Let's just get the best tackle and forget about it. Again, you got two teams here that are looking for left tackles. I don't feel very comfortable as the Arizona Cardinals continuing to move down. Uh, you, I mean, again, you got Malik neighbors here, but none of these teams are desperate enough to move up for Malik. I don't think the Bears are either. So we are going to be opting for a left tackle here. You can go either route with Joe Alt or Olu Fashanu. Depends on what you're in the mood for. I love the mobility of Olu Fashanu, so that's going to be the route that I go. He is also my number one tackle in the class, so it makes sense. We acquire an extra second round pick, which we can use on the defense, and we are able to bolster the offense here with Olu Fashanu. At pick number six for the New York Giants, uh, it's Malik Neighbors, Brock Bowers. Some people even want to highlight right tackle. Not going to be doing that. It's Malik Neighbors all day, every day. 
Uh, super weapon, you know, he is extremely fast, extremely fast, pops off on tape, improved as a route runner. I'm not there yet with him. Some people think he might be the best player in the draft. You know, for me at 16 overall, that's still really damn good on the verge of being a blue chip player. I don't like the comp of Garrett Wilson before the catch. And, you know, I think it's DJ Moore after not there yet, not there yet, but there's still more tape to be watched. So TBD pick number seven for the Titans. We all know where I'm going with this. It is Joe Alt. I mean, you need a left tackle. Joe Alt's one of the best guys you can ever find. This draft has, you know, pretty much, again, two flavors of ice cream, so to speak. You have the super high ceiling, lower floor guy in Olu. And then you have the really high floor, still a pretty damn high ceiling guy in Joe Alt here. Now, those are two bona fide franchise left tackles. Going to be very happy with either. At pick number eight with the Falcons, you have Brock Bowers, Romo Dunze here. This is a squad where I feel comfortable trading back. And you do have Brock Bowers on the board. I think that he should be coming off the board relatively soon. Same thing with Rome. Also, you got some star tackles here ahead of the Bears who might want Rome. Maybe there's a team that's looking for a star wide receiver. Not one that's within range. Not one that's within range. It's very tough to try to find a team that actually draft, you know, unless they need a tackle, which the Saints, I, I do know they have some connections, but, you know, the front offices are connected. I don't think they're going to make a trade where, you know, unless it's an exorbitant amount of draft capital, which the Saints don't have exorbitant amounts of draft capital, it wouldn't make sense. So uh, this could be a massive trade up from another team. I just don't see the value here. I really wanted to move back and get our second round pick back. I did, but we're not going to be able to. So looking at the options available, we have one wide receiver on roster that is going to be left after this year, and that's Drake London. You also have Kyle Pitts in there, woot woot. But I think Romo Dunze, like there's a big drop off in terms of the perceived value of the rest of the receiving core. And in the third round, man, I'd prefer to take a swing on an edge rusher or go free agency with an edge rusher rather than have to go and fill out wide receivers with, you know, one third round pick and then multiple free agents. It just doesn't make very much sense to me. Let's target Romo Dunze. It worked last time we were at pick eight. It's going to work again. Romo Dunze out of Washington, 6'3", 211. Just an absolute baller of a dude. Great in one in 50-50 catches as well. Big fan of that. You know, big need, good value. It's worth it. So essentially, I just gave the Bears the middle finger. Sorry about that, by the way. But, you know, when you look at the Bears options, you got Brock Bowers here. That's really tough to say no. I think it's the proper time to look at edge rusher. You know, we already got a star quarterback. We could have gotten a wide receiver, but, you know, we we kind of missed out on that one. But we still have some really good options down the board. So I'm happy being able to move down here again. Brock Bowers is on the board. I mean, it's tough to say no to Brock, but I am looking at a team like Tali, where like Talise Fawaga is available, where you have a Marius Mims available who randomly decided to come out, which means he's getting some really positive reviews. Tackles don't come out early unless they get really positive reviews. So I'm definitely going to be in the market for that. I think this could be a crazy opportunity for the Bears to move back with a team that gets a little bit aggressive. And there's two teams, I think, that the Bears could really capitalize on because I, I want to go after an edge rusher. That's the bottom line. I want to go an edge rusher and I'm going to trade back up with the Bears eventually, but uh, those two teams actually are going to be the Miami Dolphins as well as the San Francisco 49ers, wherever the hell they're listed at 31. Uh, the Dolphins, I mean, looking at the teams ahead, there is the possibility that he, I, I like this idea. So Dolphins fans, this is going to be a little bit of a crazy trade here. You're going Brock Bowers. That's, that's like the end all be all right there. Uh, you have a good amount of picks in the future years, but we're not let, like, let's see if we could toss in a good player here. Now we could toss in a wide receiver. You could just say, Hey, let's go crazy. And, you know, send Jalen Waddle. I'm not there yet. I'm not there. So uh, some ways I could see us trying to help out. I mean, of course, these three players are up for a contract. Why are they listed? But, you know, um, you could toss in a player. I don't, like the options available. So I'm actually going to send a two, a one, two, and two. So the bears are going to be moving back. This is roughly the same amount that they actually ended up. You know what? 
This is about the same value that they ended up trading in their move with um, with New York. It was 20 to one and it required two firsts. So you know what? We'll sweeten the deal with a future third round pick. How about that? We're going to continue loading up for the future years for Caleb Williams. Um, Y'all might get a little grouchy about that. And you know what? I love you anyways. It's some tough love. We'll maybe send back a future fit. Doesn't affect the mock draft, but the Bears end up getting multiple ones. The Dolphins get exactly what they've been begging me for in Brock Bowers. Pick number 10 for the New York Jets. So they need wide receiver. They need tackle. Wide receiver off the board. Tackle on the board. You get a Marius Mims, Talise Fuaga, JC Latham. JC ended off on a relatively poor note in terms of pass blocking, really good in terms of run blocker, but this is not a team that's going to be overly concerned with protecting Brees Hall compared to protecting Aaron Rodgers. So I'm going to go with the guy with the highest upside and day one impact as a pass blocker. That is Marius Mims out of Georgia. 6'7", 340, great movement skills, still developing, but I think he is a little bit more pass efficient, pass blocking efficient than Talise Fuaga is at the moment. Talise has a lot more potential, but um, I mean, to be fair, you're talking about arguably two of the highest potential tackles that I've seen, especially in terms of right tackles. At pick number 11, the Minnesota Vikings are on the board and a lot of really good choices here. A lot of really fun options. And, you know, I think this is a team where you're looking at quarterback, you're looking at edge rusher. And I'm about to screw over the Broncos right now because I think this is the prime opportunity to trade with the San Francisco 49ers. This team always looks to trade back as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Thinking about it, back in the day, they traded back actually relatively similar range with the Jamison Williams trade. I think it was back to 31 or something as well. So we're going to be trading all the way back. We're running it back because you need edge rusher or quarterback. One of those two is going to be available with proper value there. And the Niners, they don't need shit gonna be honest they need a right tackle and that's about it like that is about it so this is going to require a good amount uh i mean yeah the vikings got fleeced the last time they did this but you know we're going to uh we're gonna be a little bit a little bit more generous than what y'all got last time so maybe you could squeeze out like pick 148 this is not gonna affect the mock draft i'm never gonna send a round two pick anyways in the future for the next rounds like that that's kind of crazy but uh, the Niners moving from 31 to 11, like maybe it's a one, two, one, three, then two. Feel free to do your own negotiating. For me, um, the Niners are desperate for this type of selection here. Like they really do need it. And so the Niners are moving up. They have one hole on their team that is a huge issue, and that's right tackle. So Talise Fawaga is ideal for them, someone who does have that pass blocking upside, but is going to be an immediate impact in the run game and it has the mobility that you're looking for. Minnesota ends up gaining a ton of draft capital. The value for a quarterback's not proper. This is the way to go. This is the way. Pick number 12 for the Denver Broncos. So we did kind of just fleece a lot of the proper trade back options. I don't think JC Latham is as good as the top two guys, even though, yeah, no, I have Amaria slightly above JC. Still a big fan of JC Latham, but. I don't think we're going to see multiple massive trades at the rate that I'm uh, projecting them at this point. I think the best opportunity is to just go after a supreme edge rusher here in Jared Verse. You know, you're getting really good value with a really good player who has a great frame. He has great motor. There's not much that's wrong with Jared Verse. You don't have a pick until 76. It it's it's tough. It's really tough. But we just don't have the proper players. I mean, you could go actually after a quarterback here. It does feel relatively likely that you can go after a QB and you got Bo Nix, you got Michael Penix. You know, it it is possible. It is possible given that the Seahawks are here as well. Seahawks could be looking for their guy. You know, there, there is potential choices, but I don't know if Sean Payton's going to pull the trigger on a first round quarterback just doesn't feel right for me at the moment. And when you can get someone who is a bona fide superstar in Jared Verse, it feels like that's the way the universe wants us to go. So pick number 13 for the Vegas Raiders. You know, he could go after Bo Nix. The AP is going to be the guy who comes back. I don't know exactly if Bo Nix is going to be the best choice for y'all. I do like going QB for, a, for y'all, but 
maybe wait till round two, see what happens, right? When you can get a super stud like Jerzon Newton or get a star corner like Kool-Aid McKinstry, like there's just better options in my opinion to at least get a foundation for your team. And Jerzon Newton has been like on an absolute Twitter rampage in terms of putting on proper clips of him just destroying dudes. I'm going to give him some respect here. Uh, you passed on Jalen Carter last year, and you're going to not do the same thing this year. You're going to get the best defensive interior. You're getting Jerzon Newton, and you're continuing to develop that defensive line to win the battle of the trenches. At pick 14 for the New Orleans Saints, this is a quick one. We're running up with J.C. Latham. This team's desperate for a left tackle of the future, potentially a right tackle as well. And J.C. is by far the best tackle that is remaining. It's relatively logical. Makes sense. So J.C. Latham's going to train to be that left tackle to replace Trevor Penning. And then in case of injury, can be a great fit at right tackle. So see what happens there. At pick 15 for the Indianapolis Colts. So Ed Rusher, good position to go. D.B., good position to go. Not really a poor position to go. You can even go wide receiver here, right? I mean, you have Keon Coleman that's available. Like there's some good choices for you, but round two is ripe for these great value receivers where I feel like it's a little early for us to take one right now. When we can get a Dallas Turner, which I think is a little bit early for Dallas Turner for this system specifically, because I'd prefer for a pure edge one to have a bit more meat on his bones, have a better size to him. Uh, I think it's a little bit early for a 242. Dallas Turner is my number four player in the class, but that doesn't change the fact that he's 242 pounds. I don't feel like that's the move that the Colts would go after. Now, defensive back, certainly still on the board. Definitely still on the board. But you got Leatu Law 2 on the board, and you also have Braylon Trice on the board. Law 2, he's actually ascended up my board really fast. He's number 31 on my board. It's just because he's not the best athlete on planet Earth. And there's a lot of really, really special athletes. Like he's improved tremendously over the past year. So shout out to Leotu Lawtu for, you know, me being not a full supporter, now being a supporter of him. I think he might be the right move. I have Braylon Trice graded above him, but Braylon or but Leotu Lawtu still is a phenomenal player. Great edge bend, very strong in the upper torso. I just think he needs to be a little bit stronger in the lower. This team had seven guys with seven or four guys with seven sacks or more. And there's just not one clear cut edge rusher. I think he has like a sub 10% pass rush win rate as well. That's a little bit scary. It's a little bit scary. I don't think that that figure might be a little bit off. It might've been like a sub 70 PFF pass grade, but I saw something on my boys bring the juice and, you know, lot two certainly could be the guy that, you know, you're getting some extra help both on the interior and exterior at that size. And you do kind of look for that. I mean, especially with the fifth year option coming up for Quiddy Pay, you're going to be looking for another potential edge one because I don't know if he's really worth that 15 million, it might be 12 billion that is fully guaranteed on top of what it is next year. So Leotu Lawtu is going to be the selection. It's a very top heavy edge draft too, since we ended up losing a really good portion of the depth edge rushers. I picked number 16 for the Seattle Seahawks. This actually might be a quarterback. They're looking for a new coach, and I think that Geno is a, a kind of more of a Pete Carroll type of guy. Uh, we're going to go Bo Nix out of Oregon here. Could, could stick with a guy in Washington, Penix, but you know, less mobility, uh, older, worse resume in terms of injury history as well. And, you know, power to him. He ended off a little bit on a sour note, but that Sugar Bowl game was excellent. Bo Nix is eight points away from beating Michael Penix twice. So Michael Penix did beat Bo Nix twice. That is in, in favor of that, but he is a great player. I'm actually going to choose Bo Nix for uh, the Falcons, here, not for the Falcons, for the Seahawks here. At pick 17 for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I run up to the podium every time I see this guy available. It's Kool-Aid McKinstry. You know, they need a true corner too, and Kool-Aid McKinstry is going to be that guy. You're going to be coming up on a fifth-year contract or a fifth-year option for Tyson Campbell as well. So clock's ticking on that deal. You know, just a lot of dudes are going to be asking for money, especially in that secondary. You need to get someone who is locked down. That's Kool-Aid McKinstry. Pick 18 for the Cincinnati Bengals. Tackle has been eviscerated from the board. You know, you got Jordan Morgan here, and then, you know, Kingsley Suabataea. That's uh, it's a little bit tough to sell at this point of the draft. 
There are some really good edge rushers still available, especially with the Rams going to be lurking for one of these edge rushers. I am going to make a move up with the Chicago Bears. So Bears have a ton of draft capital. Bengals, the opportunities, like the options available are just not good enough anyway. So for a 21 to 18 move, I think it will take a third. So I'm going to give a future third and a this year fourth in order to move up. It's not going to affect this mock draft, so feel free to do your own negotiating. So the Bears move up and select Dallas Turner out of Alabama. He's going to be a great compliment there to Montez Sweat. Plays larger than he is, and I feel like he just fits the Bears very well. So in short, you essentially added a ton of draft capital just to be able to get the same player that I probably would have got for you there anyways. Pick number 19 for the Rams. Uh, Cooper DeGene is a great fit. You could talk about Terry and Arnold, Nate Wiggins, all of them being great fits. You could also talk about the edge rushers, Braylon Trice being a phenomenal option for you. Jonah Ellis as well. Like, there's just good options everywhere. I think the corners in round two are just phenomenal. Edge rushers, not so much. Let's go by number five player in the draft, Braylon Trice out of Washington. The leader in pressures this year by almost 10 of the entire nation. He led it by almost 10 compared to the next best, which is insane. Braylon Trice is going to be a great addition, 6'4", 274. He's a perfect compliment there for Byron Young as well. It's just the right thing to do. At pick 20 for the Steelers, could talk about Michael Penix here for sure, but I don't know. With the injury histories and stuff, I just don't know if teams are going to love him as much as I want them to. Uh, Cooper DeGene is available. Could be a really good get for the Steelers, but you got Nate Wiggins and Terry and Arnold. It's hard to pass on either one of those guys. I'm going to go Terry and Arnold out of Alabama. I call him miniature JPJ. You know, I think that's going to complement JPJ pretty well. He just doesn't have the length that JPJ does. At pick number 21, we're back with the Bengals. And, you know, we could actually go after Jordan Morgan to play right tackle for us. I think that'd be a very smart move. You're looking at quite a few teams that you will be facing in the playoffs that could use a Jordan Morgan. Now, I also think defensive interior kind of a big deal. And I think Byron Murphy is a beast. He's going to be a really good DJ reader replacement or compliment. And he is my number 13 player and my number one defensive interior player in the draft. We could wait and we could select another one, but I haven't taken defensive interior for the Bengals in a very long time. So I'm going to get my best defensive interior for y'all as a Steelers fan. That pains me in the ass, but I love y'all. So Byron Murphy, the second ends up going to the Bengals. You end up acquiring an extra fourth and future third round pick out of it. At pick 22 for the Philadelphia Eagles, I'm looking at Cooper DeGene pretty heavily right here. And it's not to be just a corner. I think he also can play the slot, which is really beneficial, especially if Ricks and Ringo end up working out. But Sidney Brown towards ACL, you have one viable safety pretty much next year. I don't think Kevin Byard's going to stick around unless you bring in Vrabel, which he might want to keep Kevin. But until Vrabel gets signed, you're going to want a star safety back there. Sydney needs time to recover. He's not going to be ready. Reed is, Ed Reed Blankenship, you know, he's a guy who's certainly valuable, but Cooper DeGene is everywhere. And I have never taken him for the Eagles, or maybe I took him a long time ago. And I love the fact that he's going to fill in everywhere and be everywhere right away. There's just not a better option for this team at the moment, given the options available. Edge rusher, maybe, but Cooper DeGene, I've been talking to my buddy who's an Eagles fan about this. It just feels right. And I'm more so doing this for him than anything, but still a phenomenal player. You're not getting him just to be a boundary corner because I think Eli Ricks and Keely Ringo could be the future at the boundary. You're getting this guy to be an immediate safety help, future in the slot as well, and can play a boundary. That versatility should not go unrewarded. I pick number 23 for the Houston Texans. So, a uh, quick little recap on what we have here. Quarterback, we still have Michael Penix, J.J. McCarthy, Joe Milton. You know, there's there's some good dudes in here. And I am very excited for the Vikings, who are going to be looking for one. I don't see many other teams that are going to be super quarterback hungry. Could probably try to trade up with some teams, but, man, that's a bit extreme. I think that the Texans should be debating between three players right here. That's Nate Wiggins. That's Tavondre Sweat. And... That's also going to be Keon Coleman. Because I think Keon Coleman's a great complement for what y'all already have with Nico Collins. I think he'd be kind of a missing piece there. Brian Thomas, he's a good choice, but 
I feel like Nico Collins can play a Brian Thomas role pretty damn well. I think Nate Wiggins is phenomenal, but I also think this is a team that's not desperate for a corner two at the moment. And it's where you can draft one maybe in the third round or the second round if the value is right. Defensive interior, I've just been sold on Tavondre Sweat to this team since the beginning. And I've been taking him there for a long time. I'm not going to change it up this time. We're going to go Tavondre Sweat out of Texas. Pick 24 for the Dallas Cowboys. Kept McCarthy. So there you go. That's good. Dak is going to be due, I think, $60 million next year. I, 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 That's crazy. Um, I did this pick earlier this week, and I think I did it last week as well. Jordan Morgan's a choice. You need a left tackle for the future. This guy's an instant impact. If he ends up not working at left tackle, Tyler Smith will, and Jordan Morgan can work as a star guard. That versatility should be coveted. At pick 25 for the Green Bay Packers, uh, this is also going to be a quick shoe-in. It's going to be Nate Wiggins. You need cornerback help for the future, and Nate Wiggins is incredible value. Just go best player available, and it's a position of need. I call that a win. At pick 26 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, defensive back, short list of items I'd go after. Interior offensive line. Also, I think edge rusher, very underrated in terms of being able to target it. Uh, You got Chop Robinson here. I think with veterans potentially on their way out, but also still maybe having a year left in them, they're going to be taking a swing on a super high upside player. Chop Robinson could be that. However, I always go that route. I'm going to opt to go potentially for offensive line, or I could go after wide receiver Keon Coleman here and have that be the future of Mike Evans. I, I haven't done a wide receiver pick for this team in a long time. So we're going to go after Keon Coleman. I picked number 27 for the Arizona Cardinals. We went left tackle earlier. And with the 27th pick, I think the Arizona Cardinals are going to be rushing to the podium with this one. Uh, It's not necessarily a huge position of need, but we have a ton of picks, a ton of them. we got two second round picks and three third rounders. We're going Chop Robinson out of Penn State. I mean, I know it's not the biggest position of need, but dude, this guy's an absolute animal. Tons of potential, and he's going to be right there behind BJ Ojolari. Ooh. Like that's one killer combo right there. Big fan of that dynamic duo for the future. At pick 28 for the Kansas City Chiefs, I mean, I've just been going Brian Thomas every single time. I don't think anything's going to change here. Brian Thomas is available. Brian Thomas is the pick. So Brian Thomas, 6'4", 205, great deep threat. Exactly the style of receiver I think the uh, Kansas City Chiefs will be looking for. At pick 29 for the Buffalo Bills, I do like going after... uh, Where's he at? What the hell? Did I? Oh, I did take Keon Coleman before. <laughs> I was like about to say, I always go Keon Coleman, but here I want to change things up. Well, I don't have a choice. I'm going to opt for a safety. I'm trying to push these guys up a little bit higher and higher. And I love Tyler Newbin to this team. I really do. Super versatile, super consistent, used to the cold weather. He's a good fit right away. Both of your safeties have been there for seven years already and are coming up on contracts. Therefore, time to get another guy who's going to be the face of the franchise in there. Pick number 30, or face of the defense, so to speak. Pick number 30 for the Detroit Lions. Edge rusher, going to be a great position to go. Corner, going to be a great position to go. Defensive interior, you know, the value with Chris Jenkins could be a sneaky one for sure. Offensive interior, I mean, Troy Fouton who's here. It's not crazy. It's not crazy. Uh, Looking at teams, I might want to try to get one quick trade up in before the end because we do have two quarterbacks available. Uh, any teams that skipped out on QB? No, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. We don't have any teams that are really quarterback hungry at the moment, except for the Raiders, which, you know, if there's only one team besides the, you know, the Vikings, they're not going to be trading up. So uh, unfortunately, I'm not seeing anybody too crazy slip out of the first. So RIP to that idea. So the Detroit Lions, you're going to be happy. Regardless, your dad, or your dad, <laughs> your dad, uh, Jonah Ellis's dad played for your team. Uh, I think his name was Luther Ellis. So shout out to my subs who actually pointed that out, which is great. I'm going to be opting back for Jonah Ellis in this pick. You need an edge rusher to compliment Aiden Hutchinson. He has great size. He is a top 30 player on my board. He is phenomenal. One of the best pure pass rushers I know. Not a great run defender, but I think that there's a little bit more wiggle room and understanding for someone who is sub 250. I pick 31, Minnesota Vikings. This is Michael Penix. I didn't force it. I mean, I, I don't really like going Michael Penix much earlier because of the history um, of injuries and the age, but Michael Penix is going to be able to fully unload his superstar cannon 
with this massive array of weapons. And a pick 32 for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, you got wide receivers galore. And you know what? Someone requested this last time, and I want to give you your request. It hurts me to do this because I wanted to send him to Arizona. But Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina, 6'3", 227. Going to replace Odell Beckham Jr. in the squad. Honestly, an underrated route runner. Great after the catch. This dude's an absolute freak show. So that's going to be the video. Stay tuned tomorrow for rounds two and three on day two. See you on the far side. Peace.